Hi, my name is Don Wilson. I've been a member of Open Door for 24 years, and uh, I'm married to Sharon Wilson for 32. I got three kids that attended here, and two of them that still attend here. Um, uh, this is uh, kind of rough because I've uh, kind of been hiding my whole past. I wanted to read these words from the lyrics of a song from a Christian writer, and it uh, kind of tells a little bit about uh, who I was and what I grew up, how I grew up. Diagnosed as a hyper from the day I was born, been driving people crazy ever since I was since that morn. They might tame the wind, they might tame, calm the sea, but they can't never harness my energy. I'm the poster child of hyperactiveness. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. The world's not keeping up with me. Knew that I was different from the rest of my peers. None of them could swing from the chandeliers. I never got a star from being good in class. Outlived my teachers. That's how I passed. A hyperactive kid may be hard to control, but you gotta admit, life was never dull. I spent my days just cutting up and playing jokes and pranks. I saved the world from boredom and got no thanks. It's not my fault, it's not my fault. The world just can't keep up with me. That was a song that uh, I heard and it fit me perfectly. I was born into a very good Christian home. Mom and dad were perfect for each other. God put them together. Mom was a piano player, came from the farm. Dad was a guitar player and just loved music and loved to sing. So they got married and they started a ministry together. And then dad became a music director in a Baptist church. My sister was born and uh, she was the perfect angel. And then two years later, I was born. That was a surprise because Donald became the little possessed child. Demon possessed is what they called me, devil child. I could sit still. My mom said the terrible twos happened two days after I learned how to walk. Uh, by the time I was in five years old, I've gone to two doctors, a couple psychiatrists, and they diagnosed me with extreme hyperactiveness. By the time I hit five years old, I spent a lot of time at uh, my mom, grandpa's farm. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. So by the time I hit uh, third grade, things weren't going very well in school. I could start getting labeled, unable to play with others, disturbing in class, interruption in class, can't sit still, can't stop talking, can't function like normal kids. The third grade teacher told my parents that Donald will never learn, never be able to learn like a normal kid. I learned where my place was. By the time I hit uh, the sixth grade, when I was the summer before the sixth grade, I went to the farm. Because at this time, I was spending almost every summer at the farm, every winter break at the farm. And Grandpa was uh, kind of making sure that I was able to stay busy. Uh, Grandpa had no car give me projects. Go take the headlights out. Go take the radio out. Uh, and when I got a little older, take the seats out. Let's take the bearings apart. Let's pack the bearings. So uh, he kept, kept me going with that. And I didn't know at the time that uh, this was something he was able to do that, uh, to give me uh, the ability to do things the training that uh, I would use in the future. 
you know, by the time I was in the fifth grade, the, the, the whippings got worse and the bruises started showing up. I go to school with uh, bruises on my face, fat lips, because uh, my dad didn't, didn't know how to handle it. And actually, he was actually doing what his father did, getting ready to go into sixth grade. And I come back home about a week before class starts. And I have a friend of mine at the complex that we lived in. We kind of got together and uh, we were playing and a couple of these older boys showed up and started messing with him and calling him names. And I got in there and I got shoved down on the ground, and picked up a rock and started beating these kids with them until we were able to get away. And then the next day the police show up. I end up at, at the farm for three weeks, missing the first two weeks of school. So uh, school's out. The summertime comes and I go back down to the farm. I start learning more about tearing these cars apart. My grandpa showed me how to file down points in the tractor. So he'd take the tractor down south of the field and get, get stuck down there and then come up and say, Dad, say, Donald, grab your tools. You gotta go file the points down. And it was an opportunity to just go there and just do what I could do with my hands. Now I couldn't drive the tractor back up to the house because I did that once and made a deep U-turn and messed up a bunch of cornfield. I was getting ready to go into seventh grade and a couple, this lady and man moved out of, the, of, of a apartment complex and left a bow and arrow left in the trash can. And I grabbed that, thought it was cool and I, uh, Ended up shooting a girl in the arm with that arrow. Police showed up at the house. I get shipped back down to the farm again. And uh, my, my dad lost his job. I came back home from being at the farm of a winter break because they didn't want me around. Uh, I start the class my seventh grade year right after Christmas at a new school, this will be the third school, I get to my seventh grade class, first hour, and it's English. Why would anybody put English as a first hour after a kid wakes up from all night and sleeping? I don't know, but uh, my seventh grade teacher, English teacher, decides to put everybody in alphabetical order. And I'm saying, this is good. I'm a Wilson. I'm the last one. I'm going to be over on the far left behind or the far right in the back, so I'm okay. And Mr. Pearson decides to stir stuff up, decides to start at the bottom and uh, puts the bottom right smack in the middle front row. And so that was me. I'm a Wilson. And it, it's not good because I, I can't sit still. I can't, I can't function. Hands me a book. I don't know what to do with the book. Asked to open the page up to 54. And then he proceeds to, I figure I just put my head down, open the book, and not even look at anybody. And Mr. Pearson says, Donald Wilson, would you please read the first paragraph? And I'm like, my answer is no. Mr. Pierce said, no, Donald Wilson, I'd like you to stand up and read. And I went, no, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to do that. I stood up and grabbed the desk, just like this. And he said, you're going to have to do this or go to the principal's office. And that wasn't a problem. So I picked up the chair, and I mean the desk, and tossed it at him and said, I'm going to the principal's office. I went to the principal's office, and my dad, mom, showed up. I've never seen my dad so mad. I mean, I've seen him mad. I've got some pretty good beatings. But he grabbed me on my shoulders and squeezed me so hard like a vice. Picked me up and looked at me, and he goes, all you had to do is read. Why couldn't you just do this? And I looked at my dad, and I go, Dad? 
I can't read. I could not read. Seventh grade. So he put me down and looked over at my mom and he looked down and said, what did I do, raise an idiot? And walked out. They uh, decided to, you know, put me, obviously I had to go learn how to read, so I had reading classes, but now I have new labels. Grandpa was pretty hard on me. It's like the phrases, the one-liners, you ain't gonna amount to nothing. You're never gonna have a good job. Lucky if you even have a job. You're gonna live behind bars. And ain't no woman gonna fall for you or be around you. This stuff sticks in your head all day long when you're growing up and you hear it all the time. Well, I finally got to high school. I had an English te a teacher that told me I needed to read what I liked. She asked me, what do you like to do? I said, work on cars, read car manuals. So that's what I started reading. What else you do? I go to church. I have to go to church every Sunday. My dad says, no matter what, I gotta go to church. So I went to church every Sunday. So she got me a, a Bible for class to read the Bible. So I read a Bible and I read an owner's manual. When I graduated high school, which was a miracle, my dad gave me a present said he didn't think, if I, didn't think I'd make it, and then handed it to me. And I met my wife, and we got married, but I still had stuff running in my head. We, we had a son. First thing to come out of my dad was, I hope he don't grow up to be like you. So at that time, I decided I wasn't ever going to lay a hand on my son. Well, what I ended up doing is, Probably something even worse was, instead of correcting my son, through the years of what my dad did to me, and I didn't know what to do to him, my son, was I, I, I talked to him and said, I'm gonna talk to him, but then he'd be yelling. It just, it just, it became verbal abuse instead of physical abuse. I didn't seem to do that with the girls, but I did it with my son. Because every time something happened, I always thought about what people thought about me, what people said about me, and my reactions were always that. But you know what? God looks at me perfect. The choices I make, the voices in my head, if I would have been more alert to what God wanted, my kids, I wanted them to be perfect because I wasn't. God has gave me the perfect wife now, we know it's not perfect as and we don't argue because we are opposites of everything we do. No matter, no matter what other people said, my mind has to listen to what God says. And no matter what happened, he raised, he don't, he don't make no junk. So if your past haunts you, then talk about it, get it out, get it open so you can get it out of the way. So when you have Jesus controlling your heart and your mind, then you're, the things you do is what God wants. And all I ever wanna do is serve God. Um, when I came to Open Door, I tried to escape my past and come here and I just said, God, Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do. Whatever ministry you want me to work in, I'll do it. And uh, it's really been great. <laughs>